One of the great things about this ship is its amazing collection of fine wines. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I host a, a red wine tasting in the Culinary Arts Center every morning at 7 a.m. <laughs> we have a great time together. Oh, just talking about wine and how terrific it is, and sometimes not talking and just staring at each other. And sometimes we, we don't even turn the lights on. It's fantastic. <laughs> Now, it may surprise you because, indeed, for many years, I was pretty open about my ignorance about non-wine alcohols. In fact, David, are you here? Where's David Reese with my non-wine alcohol? Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're not supposed to have glass on stage, so uh, I'll be very careful. As you've seen with my previous treatment of liquids on stage, <laughs> I'll be very careful in it, especially after I drink this. Mm. It's true that for many years, I, uh, I didn't know a lot about wine, and red wine in particular. I was intimidated by it. Uh, I thought that it was uh, too uh, sophisticated and complex, and something that only you know scholars and annoying dads and assholes could enjoy. <laughs> uh, but it turns out that's not true for while red wine is very noble, it is also very humble. It is the simplest recipe in the world, and one of the oldest recipes in the world to make wine, requiring only grapes, yeast, human feet, and time. <laughs> Plus an enormous amount of pharmaceutical pseudoephedrine and, uh, and beakers and Bunsen burners. Uh, you know, if you are going to make a red wine lab, also I would recommend that you, you get some guns and some extremely violent dogs because your competitors will come after you and try to steal all of your wine and then cut off your feet so that you can no longer make wine and perhaps bleed to death. And this is how the peasants of Europe have made wine ever since 6000 BC. And quaint, mogul red wine labs with cash brews that still elude capture today. In Europe, uh, red wine remains a part of daily life. You know, while we in the US have demonized alcohol, we've had an ambivalent relationship with alcohol, unless we were on this boat. <laughs> Most Europeans uh, are always drunk and will frequently enjoy a glass of red wine even in the middle of one of their many naps. <laughs> in France, uh, children do not hide their drinking. Uh, they join their parents at the dinner table and are served red wine uh, at the table with their parents because it is believed that it will make the children more sexy. <laughs> so how can you learn to enjoy red wine just like the sexy French children? <laughs> it's easy. Of all the varieties of wine, white wine, red wine, box wine, <laughs> prison wine, and sparkling wine, which is commonly called champagne, but is technically called French Thunderbird, <laughs> The best kind of wine is red wine. Named for its color, red wine. I like that one. I don't know why that's. Named for its color, red wine has the most helpful tannins and antioxidants, and that is why the baby boomers love it. For well, doctors agree, if you drink red wine, you will become immortal, and you will start to look like Francis Ford Coppola and we'll learn to tell long, pointless stories at the dinner table that go nowhere because you love the sound of your own voice. <laughs> to your health, asshole dad. <laughs> your health, boy, boy. <laughs> Red wine also offers the greatest depth of flavor, ranging from the bright berry, ozone, and burnt hair notes of a jammy Cabernaz Beausoleil. <laughs> To the, to the wine of the luxuriously pungent Argentine Velociraptor grape. <laughs> with its hint of bitter chocolate and chewed up aluminum foil and <laughs> fried crickets. Experts know that these wines have the viscosity of Marmite and spit. <laughs> and experts also know to not even pour them, uh, just simply rub them on your bare chest like a poultice. <laughs> Some famous people who enjoy drinking red wine include 
Val Kilmer. choosing one. You may think that it's enough just to read Val Kilmer's red wine blog and drink what he drinks. And for the most part, you do fine following his advice. But we warn you that Val Kilmer sometimes gets confused and drinks Thousand Island dressing. So it's important to develop your own palate. Uh, go to a reputable wine shop and just start exploring. You know, just look at the labels. Does the label have a kangaroo on it? It's probably a good wine. Does the label have like a, a quirky hand-drawn picture of the vineyard owner's dog on it? And is the wine named for that crazy old smelly dog? Like, Crazy smelly dog wine. It's probably pretty good. Oh, but make sure the font on the label is cool. No cursive, no serifs, understand? And remember, don't buy anything that has a landscape on it. If you buy a wine with a landscape on the label, that means you are not intelligent. One great way to learn about wine, and you can take advantage of this when we come into port, uh, is to take a tour of the vineyards of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> oh, as you drink and drive and drink and drive <laughs> from vineyard to vineyard. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask the salesperson, is this a white wine? And if the salesperson says yes, then throw it on the ground. <laughs> ask the salesperson, is this a red wine? If the salesperson says, yes, good, drink as much as you can, fast, and then fall asleep in a field. You may ask, what if the wine is colored red with blood? That is a rosé wine. And that is good if you are a Spanish vampire. And that is all you need to know about wine.